right, healthcare brothers and sisters. We're moving on to the next video in our How to Pass Your Pediatric Advanced Life Support Certification Series Like a Boss. And today we're going to be covering systematic approach in PALS. So within PALS, they use the evaluate, identify, and intervene systematic approach model. However, it is important to note if at any point during the systematic approach you identify a potential life-threatening emergency, you want to stop the systematic approach, intervene, and continue with your assessment once you've treated that cause. So to begin with, we're going to look at our initial impression, our ABC. That stands for Appearance, Breathing, Circulation. So appearance, we're going to be looking at level of consciousness and the ability for the child to interact. Breathing, we're looking at the work of breathing, any audible breath sounds such as wheezing, grunting, strider. And in circulation, we want to look at the skin color and the condition. So that's either pallor, petechiae, bleeding, wounds. If there are any potential life-threatening emergencies identified, then we want to identify it and intervene. However, if there are no life-threatening emergencies identified, we're gonna move on to the primary assessment survey. So an easy way to remember your primary assessment survey is A, B, C, D, E. So A stands for airway. Is the airway patent? Is there good flow in the trachea? Cricoid cartilage is the narrowest point in a pediatric airway. The circumference of the trachea is smaller than adults and is more like a funnel. So a pediatric head, tongue and epiglottis are much larger than adults and can be causing a lot more obstruction than adults would. Next we move on to breathing in our primary survey. Is the respiratory rate regular, increased, or decreased? Is the breathing effort unlabored? Is the chest expansion appropriate or do you note retractions and nasal flaring? Adventitious breath sounds such as wheezing or grunting. Grunting can be a result of upper airway obstructions due to secretions, vomit, or even blood. Oxygen saturation with pulse oximetry is noted and needed for these patients. A consistent respiratory rate of less than 10 or more than 60 per minute in a child of any age is considered a normal and warrants assessment for the presence of a potential serious condition. Moving on to C in our primary survey is circulation. This time we're gonna be looking at the heart rate. Is it regular, increased, or decreased? Heart rates greater than 180 minutes in a infant or toddler and 160 per minute in a child older than two warrants assessment because it can be serious. Is the heart rhythm regular? Or irregular. And pulses, we want to check both peripheral and central pulses. Also in circulation, we're going to be looking at blood pressure. Hypertensive blood pressures or hypotensive blood pressures. A low systolic blood pressure is a late sign that something is wrong. It can be difficult to memorize normal systolic blood pressures in children regarding their age. A good way to remember is using the following calculation. Low systolic blood pressure is less than 70 plus two times the age of the child. Exceptions of blood pressure rules include neonates less than 60, infants less than 70, and children's ages 10 and older less than 90. In circulation, we also want to look at skin color and temperature. Is the child cyanotic? Is there molting present? Capillary refill. And how is the patient oxygenating? Moving on to the D in our ABCD primary assessment surveys for disability. We're looking at neurological status, so level of consciousness, pupillary responses. We're gonna use the AVPU score, meaning is the child alert? Are they verbal to stimuli? Are they responsive to only painful stimuli? Or are they just not responsive at all? We also wanna look at blood glucose monitoring. That's very important. Hypoglycemia in pediatrics for the neonate is less than 45, and an infant and child is less than 60. For treatment, children go through glucose much quicker than adults do. So we wanna give D25W for treatment of hypoglycemia in pediatric patients. 
Lastly, we have exposure. We want to get all the clothes and everything off that child. So we're looking at body temperature, we're looking at skin condition. Is there bleeding notice? Is there bruising notice? Are there rashes? Are there any puncture wounds? We want to get everything off and we want to look at everything. If at any point during this assessment we note potential life-threatening emergencies, we want to identify and intervene. However, if there are none, if we don't note any potential life-threatening emergencies, then we're gonna move on to our secondary assessment. So I'm sure you've heard this before, this sample mnemonic. That is what we use for the secondary assessment survey. So we begin with signs and symptoms. Signs are the objective information that we can see. Whereas symptoms are the subjective information usually provided by the care provider. Allergies include allergies to food, medications, and environmental allergies. Next we're going to be looking at medications, over-the-counter medications, vitamins, supplements, prescribed medications, and most importantly, any medication not prescribed to the child that they may have ingested or used, such as grandma's painkillers or grandpa's hypertension medication. Moving on to the last part of our sample mnemonic, previous medical history. What is their previous illnesses? Were they previously hospitalized? Are their immunizations and vaccinations up to date? Last meal, fluid, pee, poop. What was the time of their last meal or fluid intake? What was the last meal or fluid that they ingested? When was the last time they peed, pooped, or had a wet diaper? How many wet diapers have they had over a period of 24 hours? And lastly, events. What led up to the current presentation of this pediatric patient? I hope this video was helpful for you in passing your pediatric advanced life support certification like a boss. If you're ready to move on to the next video within this series, click that link up here in the corner.